Those of you that haven't been here before, just want to welcome you and just let you know that we are a collective of people that want to share and learn from each other. Sometimes we have guest speakers, sometimes it's more casual. We've got a great group here and welcome all of you. Thank you for being here. Carlos was going to hop on for a little bit. I don't know if you can be, how long you can be here, Carlos, but I know you uh, put in the chat, in the WhatsApp chat, um, bring your questions. So I know people have some questions for you. And if anybody else wants to, um, talk please share what you're up to in the crypto world and what you're learning what you want to learn uh, that's kind of what we're all about take it away whoever wants to jump in we need to talk about the sacrifice please this is like the one time this is like this has to be front and center this week yeah. carlos carlos do it please all right <laughs> give everybody the last chance here <laughs> Yeah, I know. I've been telling you guys about it for like a long time, but um, um, all right. Well, first of all, uh, the there is there's a lot of fuzz going around on Twitter right now. If you guys just open, everybody is just talking about sacrifice, sacrificing to Pulsex. Um, and the reason for that is because Pulsex is a fork of Uniswap. So there's been a couple forks of Uniswap before, like PancakeSwap and uh, many other decentralized exchanges. And what's happening right now is that um, a few months ago, uh, when we were looking into Pulse Chain, which is a fork of Ethereum, it's basically a whole new blockchain that is launching, that is basically giving you uh, an, the biggest airdrop, which means that the, it's a hard fork of Ethereum, meaning that all the different ERC20 tokens are going to be mirrored in Pulse Chain. That means that if uh, you have ERC20s, meaning USDC, or any other ERC20 token on your MetaMask wallet, since you are integrated into the Ethereum network, all these different assets are automatically going to be mirrored or copied into the Pulse Chain network, meaning that Pulse Chain is literally a copy of Ethereum exactly with the same assets that, that it has, even with the same NFTs. So NFTs are going to be copied. The, everything is going to be copied into the Pulse Chain network. So once Pulse Chain launches, you in your MetaMask, if you have any ERC20 tokens, automatically you're going to see the same ERC20 tokens in your MetaMask on the Pulse Chain network. You don't have to do anything. It's automatic, you know? So uh, people should be aware of the Pulse Chain mainnet launch, which is gonna be in a couple months. And therefore you will see those tokens. So one of the main things that is, is happening there is that all these different tokens and platforms will need some sort of liquidity, liquidity pairing with USDC and so forth. So therefore there needs to be a platform like Uniswap for liquidity providing. And as well as sw swapping the different tokens you guys are gonna get are, are gonna have on Pulse Chain, right? So what happened is that we had a sacrifice phase, which means like participating on an ICO or an IDO, or think about it that way, an IPO, uh, where you go ahead and, and and send a certain amount of tokens to a sacrificing address, and I'll explain why it's called a sacrificing address. Um, and then therefore you will get an airdrop allocated to the amount of obviously investment that you put in for you to get that. So out of the sacrifice that I made for, for example, for Pulse Chain, I got allocated a certain amount of Pulse tokens uh -huh. uh, that are now, um, they, 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 basically we got the sacrifice tokens allocated according to the investment that we did. And the value that was supposed to be given was 0 0.008 cents. Right now, people are trying to sacrifice at 0 0.23 cents. You know, that's that, that's an incredible amount of, of, of buying pressure for the Pulse Chain Network. So um, automatically, I'm guessing that once the, the, the launch of the main aid is, is happening, we're probably going to do a quick 100x according to the... Uh, the numbers right now. Uh, but anyway, the Uniswap uh, fork is Pulse X, you know, so 
this Pulse X is also a project from the team. Basically, Richard Hart, which is a founder of Hex, is uh, founded Pulse Chain Network, which is already on the test uh, network, basically. Um, it's also launching the Pulse X project due to the fact that we're going to need all this liquidity to uh, start trading within the Pulse Chain Network. So he's also coming out with this project, which is basically just a copy of Uniswap. But he's making a couple modifications. The modifications on this Pulse X fork is that the fees are going to be lower than the Uniswap version, as well as the liquidity. Half of the liquidity providing is already going to be there due to the fact that we're mirroring all these different assets. So LPs are actually going to profit quite a bit on you know for and and yield farmers are going to profit quite a bit with that because half of their liquidity is already being provided. So anyway, a lot of people are being excited about it. They, the people that have missed the Pulse Chain sacrifice are super hyped to actually get into the Pulse X sacrifice phase. The reason that it's called a sacrifice is because the, for legal reasons, the, the, the legality of, of participating in a project like an ICO here in the United States is illegal. You, according to the SEC law, you cannot participate in any uh, project uh, that, that gives you that. So uh, ICOs are, are illegal for United States citizens and so forth. So what happens here is that, you know, Richard basically says, you know, uh, you should, for us to go around the SEC law, you should not be giving money in expect, uh, and expect a profit from the work of others. So therefore, you are going to sacrifice your money you're gonna send it to an origin address and you're gonna sacrifice it, having zero expectations of you getting an airdrop or zero expectations for you to get a certain token. And if you get it, well, good for you, but you should have zero expectation of, pro of, of profiting from the work of others. And if you do sacrifice something, it's for making a statement for freedom of speech and the right to assemble. Uh, just to make that statement, basically, you're kind of like donating money. And that's why it's called sacrifice, because you shouldn't have an expectation of getting that money back at all. So for little reasons is that, you know, they did the sacrifice phase for Hex and uh, Bitcoiners were able to sacrifice their Bitcoin in exchange of Hex. And obviously, you guys know that Hex has done a 10,000 X. And anyway, um, Paul Shane is going to do well, and Paul's X is basically just a Uniswap version of that. So now people are asking about what, how does the sacrifice work? How do I do it? How do I even participate in that? And is it something that anyone can participate in? And um, so basically, the sacrifice is literally sending your coins to a, an address. There's a lot of scams out there. So there's gonna be like token starter scams in like the, it, it, you know, the, the, the token is, you know, trading here and there, and I'm gonna go ahead and send you this and you should send me your money so that you can go. There's so many scams already out there. So you guys, the reason I'm jumping in this call right now is to kind of show you what the process is in case you guys wanna participate on the PulseX uh, sacrifice phase. So you guys can have that nice little 100x or 200x. So the reason I'm saying 200x is not just talking out of my ass, is literally PancakeSwap, uh, PancakeSwap doing a 200x in seven months uh, when it was a fork of, of, of Uniswap. So whatever it is that you guys want to expect from that uh, or, or historical forks that have come out out of Uniswap, you guys go ahead and make your own choice to see uh, what you're doing. I'm personally sacrificing quite a bit of money in there. I'm sacrificing around a hundred thousand. Um, so in in that case, um, I didn't go as hard as I did for PulseX for Pulse Chain Network. I only sacrificed about fifty thousand uh, for Pulse Chain. But now that I got the allocation of tokens in there. And now that people are demanding it to like the sacrifice at 23 cents, the amount of tokens that I have and the amount of value that it, that, that it has, it's, it's a massive amount of gains that I'm projecting to have. So I'm going a little harder for Pulsex. Um, so anyway, uh, do you guys have any questions about it before I show you how to do it as far as a proper way to do it? Yeah. Um, Claudia, did you do it? 
You she did said 27 or 27. I, I, I did not sacrifice because the sacrifice oh. just started. So that it's not, oh. but I bought, today. I, I yeah. it just started today. So you did it today, Carlos. Okay. No, when's I the? It has no, I haven't, I haven't done it yet because um, I bought a hundred thousand dollars of uh, hex today. Um, there's but only it, it, certain, yeah, there's only gets, certain tokens that you can sacrifice that down. Yeah, know. yeah. But, but when you good. say the fees are going to be smaller on the, on this, on the new um, um, ecosystem, is it going to be like half or do you know, or is it going to be like harmony where it's like a tenth of a cent or kind of thing? Yeah, it's like a couple pennies. So more like a Binance smart chain. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess I'm still a little confused how the liquidity works. If it's really sitting, I, I don't know. I'm a little confused, but I'm sure I'll, once you go through it, I'll pick it up. But um, what, that's what a lot. You must have a lot of confidence in this project, Carlos, if you're investing so much. Yeah, I do. I do. And, um, uh, you know, I, you know, since, since, since Hex, you know, I've been really confident on all of that. I have written it up and down up and down up and down and it's like i said you know one of the main factors of that is that it's immutable code and there's a lot of like bad rap of it and there's good rap about it people are going to make their own mind about it but at the same time it has worked out excellently for me and i have made tons of money with it so what has been your return on your investment at hex uh, about 50x wow and you, but you've been in it since the beginning. <clears throat> no, no, no. no, I was, I was in it maybe by the beginning of the year, maybe a little bit like maybe February, March, something like that. If you would have been in it from the beginning, you would have done 10,000 X. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. That's a and, 1 million. That's a 1 million percent increase. What, what's your average buying at one cent? Yeah. Okay, where, where, where do you guys find these projects so early and how do you, like get the confidence and understand them and know how, how long to hold it, all that kind of stuff. Like where's the origin of the investment? Well, you yeah. asked a couple of, you, you asked a couple of things in there, but as far as how do you find them? Well, for example, I only, I, I find them by educating myself on certain ecosystems. So, so I'm, I'm very big on the pair chain auctions for Polkadot and I educate myself on all these different, uh, uh, all these different projects as far as who's back in the mob, who are the VCs, um, who, uh, what, what type of technology they're bringing into uh, the, the ecosystem, my own decisions and projections as far as, you know, like in a one year term or two year term or three year term, you know, as far as whether it's going to be exposed in a good significant manner to the public and do they have a good marketing team? Like and, and and are they adding really value into the ecosystem? Uh, so therefore, I have participating, I have been participating on the Kusama parachain auctions and the Polkadot uh, parachain auctions as an early investor for me to get all these early tokens on projects that within a one year period they're gonna go ahead and do multiples. So for example, like just on Karura, we've done a ten x with Calamari when he launched. Uh, we did it 3x, uh, you know, so, so all these different things, you know, I'm, I'm, I have created myself uh, uh, as far as the investor profile as someone that invests early on, on projects and very long term. So uh, one of the key factors in your mindset for you to find these sort of projects is for you to switch it from short term investing and trading to uh, educating yourself in ecosystems. Uh, and, and being aware of all these different projects that are probably going to be very like, or, or they're going to be pillars into certain ecosystems. So you can be able to participate uh, in these projects and be able to have very big balls to just hold off for a very, very long time for you to not uh, be uh, incentivized to sell very quickly. So like today I'm looking at my hex portfolio and I'm just like, I literally made like $50,000 today. So uh, you know, I want to I want to go ahead and sell, um, but luckily I have uh, some of it locked and some of it liquid, and I'm also expecting for me to sacrifice quite a lot of that hex that I made today, for example, uh, into pulsex. 
And therefore, when POSIX launch, uh, launches, then therefore the incentive to hold that token for even longer period of time will also serve me. So I look at different patterns um, as far as the, the projects and what other projects have done in the past to see whether I want to go into those projects or not. What's your average hold time, let's say, like you get in something early? Um, I, I mean, right now, I guess average is like two years. Oh, okay. Cool. Do yeah. you ever sell or do you just take profits and keep a moon bag? I only sell uh, interest, you know, from the ones I'm producing. So I have certain stakes expiring. And let's say that that stake expired and the capital that I put in there is a hundred thousand, but the interest is like 70,000, then I'll probably sell the 70. Um, like I'm trying to buy a protect leap, you know, so it's like 230,000. So I'm like selling a couple of things here and there just so I could buy myself a watch. Um, you know, so maybe just the interest. Um, and, but that's about it. You know, I, I still have other sources of income, so I, I try not to sell my investments at all. Cool. Awesome. Let's see it. My Patek or? <laughs> yeah, show, how, show us how to make money <laughs> with this, 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 what's it called again? Sacrifice? sacrifice? Yeah. Sacrifice? Yeah, the sacrifice phase. So basically this is you participating into an ICO where you're gonna go ahead and send your money then without the expectation of anything in return, right? Like that's the whole legality of it. Then there's going to be a list or an update saying that you've allocated certain amount of things into uh, polls. So I'll, I'll show you guys how it looks like. Hey, Bobby, do you know if I can share my screen or? You should be able to. Um, okay, so I'll, this is a Patek I'm trying to buy. This one right here. <laughs> Nice. nice. Um, all right. So basically the way that it works, I'm going to go ahead and let me open up my, I have this wallet right here, which I, one of the things I'm going to copy this. Um, one of the things that you guys are going to notice here is that this is the origin address that is being used for the sacrifice of Pulse X. So as you guys can see, there's already been $22 million being sacrificed just in HEX, which is about, six, well, let me, let me actually look first. Yeah, 71 million HEX or $24 million of HEX have already been sacrificed just within a couple hours. Um, and 4 million of uh, $5 million in stable coins, three, 3 million in USDC, 700,000 in USDT, and then just this BS, well, wrap Bitcoin and then Shiba Inu or whatever. Now, um, there are some coins that are not accepted. So like today in the morning, uh, there is this, for example, the, the Hokkaido Inu, it was worth $3 billion. But one of the things here is that you cannot sacrifice just any coin. You cannot just, since this is just an origin address and you can just send anything to this address, People are, start, uh, are are going to think that they can just send anything they want and, and be able to receive something in return. And that's not the case. Uh, all these different investments uh, like Hokkaido, Inu, Kishu Inu are not going to count for the sacrifice. These are just, and, and especially because they did something to the code and this was worth $3 billion a, a few days, uh, I mean, a few hours ago. So when, when, when that happened, they were like, oh shit, what, what's going on? Um, well, it was, it was, this coin is a scam and, and they modified something to show that it was a 3 billion so they can account for a 3 billion contribution to policy sacrifice. But we have certain coins that we can um, sacrifice, info. So the, the same coins that we sacrifice for the Pulse chain network are, are gonna be the ones that we're gonna be able to sacrifice for Pulse X. Um, the team that launches. So would this be something that you would hold for two years, uh, like around 18 months, two years? Um, 
Is this something that like Pulse Chain or Pulse X? Pulse X, Pulse Chain, either one. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not really planning to let go of any of these assets due to the fact that there is also a project called Liquid Pulse uh, that is launching on the Pulse Network that is going to be liquid loans, uh, meaning that you could put in your Pulse as collateral and, and you can get the loans from it if I need some sort of liquidity for, for that. It's not, I don't need the money right now um, unless I find some sort of asset that is either going to increase in value a lot higher than what my investment is or that that asset is going to give me some sort of cash flow like real estate you know so up until that point then i'll probably start moving things around but it's not something that i'm planning to sell it's not like oh let me just capture gains real quick just because this might actually dump no 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 like you are an early investor you're here for a long for the long run if you need some sort of liquidity you just go ahead and, and use that but um but it's not something that you're looking to get into with a short-term mindset got it yeah so so carlos um the way i understand it is we've got pulse x is going to be a token that is then you can make money with on the new pulse chain right i mean that is not something that you necessarily want to sell for just because it increases in price it's something that will yield <clears throat> Yeah, you're, you're going to be able to do. Yeah, right? you're, you're you're going to be able to farm it. Yeah. So, like for example, me that I have an allocation of pulse chain tokens already, I could actually stake that, or I could actually put it up for liquidity with like the pairing of pulse chain token with my pulse X token. I could provide liquidity to it in in, in an LP pool with you know in the new Uniswap fork on pulse X, and make uh, fees from that. So therefore, like a percentage. On, on that as if I was yield farming. I don't know what the percentage are gonna be. I mean, the market is gonna determine the, the, the amounts, uh, but I'm still not gonna do that. Um, uh, maybe, maybe, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm moving away from active trading or active yield farming to just my long-term holds and, and making sure that my investments are appreciating over time. But, uh, but you could, you can definitely do that. Like, like I said, I'm not really planning to sell. So uh, a lot of people are thinking about providing liquidity, but that's not my, that's not my plan. But you would stake it, right? And just leave it. No, you just let it sit there. Wait, it's I'll probably what? sell some, I'll, I'll probably sell a lot. Like I'm estimating, I'm estimating my pulse chain to, I mean, it sounds insane, but I'm really estimating within a year to have about $40 million on the pulse chain. Uh, as far as tokens, uh, that that really would go into uh, purchasing more hex on the Pulse network for me to create staking ladders, for me to then earn more interest on under hex but under the Pulse chain network. So at the same time, I'd be pumping my own bags. You know, if I got millions of tokens on Pulse chain, if I do, if I sell those with 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 people coming in then I could just go ahead and pump my own back because I already have hex. So I can pump my own backs and, and, and increase the value of all the different investments that I have. So I could, I could probably do that, sell some hex or actually get a loan instead of selling my pulse, get a liquid loan from, from my pulse tokens and use that loan to purchase more hex and stake it over a period of time so I could get more interest. So that, that would be something that I'm planning to do, but I'm, I, I'm I'm very concerned with securities, right? You know, with with security on the network. So I don't know what platforms are going to be offered to be to do stakings. I'm not planning to give my tokens to anybody, um, and I'm I'm just very secure about it. Okay. And 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 what Carlos is saying is what a lot of the people in the Hex network are are doing because a lot of those people have are already super rich because of what Hex has done to them. So they're just staking this money just to really support whatever Richard Hardest projects he puts out there. And yes. I think and and none of them need to ever sell these bags. That's what I'm getting. I mean, of course, there will be people, and there's new people like me to hacks. When I see $40 million, I'm definitely gonna sell something of this. But uh, <laughs> But, but most of them already have these 
ridiculous amounts of money. They're all just like hanging out on YouTube, it seems like. And there's this whole group from Germany just touring through the United States, onboarding people just for the heck of it because they have nothing better to do with their time because they just don't need to ever work. And they're all like 15 years old or something like that. Um, <laughs> You, you, only, you, you only sell what you need, you know, like, yeah. and, and like, for example, people like me that I have a job, you know, and I'm not planning to quit my job or do anything. I got companies like why even sell my investments that are actually giving me multiples and appreciating assets? You know, it's, it doesn't really make any sense. Okay, so what's the timeline for this? Let's, can you tell me, like, if I'm totally new and I wanted to, what's my first step? Like, what do I do? I think I actually, this is the truth. I think I want to do this. So what do I do? Okay. Uh, yeah. there, what, what you have to do is basically make sure that the token you're going to send, it's compatible with the sacrifice. So I'm going to show you guys what tokens are compatible with the sacrifice here. Okay. The, the same tokens that were compatible with the Pulse Chain Sacrifice are compatible with the Pulse X Sacrifice. So all you got to do is connect your wallet to make sure that it's an ERC, to, that it recognizes basically what type of um, sacrifice you're doing. So once you go ahead and connect your wallet, let me move this. And do you have to go to like Chainlist to get this uh, different like network added or no? Is this an Ethereum uh, yeah, mainnet? Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, it's not on the Ethereum Pulse chain. Is basically you're gonna go ahead and do a new network to be able to see the Pulse chain in your MetaMask. So, do you use Chainlist? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, does it does Chainlist have the Pulse? Not, not, not yet, because it's not launched on on mainnet. Okay, so where do you get the information to add the network? Uh, well, you, you you get it on the GitLab. On, on GitLab, so uh, you you have to it's it's you can go ahead and art uh, at the network already, but it's only going to be at a testnet level. So you have to be a little bit advanced into how to get all those different things, and and you get it on on GitLab, GitLab Pulse Chain. Uh, and the group information. No. I don't know. I, I haven't done it. So, but I know that you can get it from here. Well, uh, how did you do the pulse? How did you do the sacrifice that you already did? You didn't do yet. Oh, you haven't. Now I haven't explained it yet. But this is this is this is the way you do. You do it. You connect your wallet here, and then you select the network in which you're planning to send the tokens. So, if you're planning to send tokens from your Binance network or from Ethereum network or from Bitcoin Cash or whatever it is that you're planning to send it from, you go ahead and select all, uh, whatever token it is that you're going to go ahead and send. So let's just say that you are planning to send it from Ethereum. Then these are the available tokens that you're able, the ERC20 tokens that you're able to send. So you can send basically crypto.com or compound or die or maker or hex. Basically, all these ones are the approved tokens that you can send from your ERC20 token wallet. You cannot send Shiba Inu. You cannot, or maybe it is. Uh, yeah, I saw Shiba Inu, yeah, yeah. Shiba, Shiba Inu is allowed. Um, but the other Inus, you know, the other dot coins are probably not going to be approved. So once you go ahead and find that your uh, desirable token is something that you can send, let's just say that in, in this wallet right here that I that I showed you guys, I have like $15,000 in X, right? So if I wanted to send this hex right here, <clears throat> um, all I gotta do is make sure that it's compatible. Okay, yes, it's compatible. And therefore it gives me the sacrifice address here. It says your sacrifice to the address below. All you gotta do is just copy that address and it's a basically just a regular send. So you're gonna go ahead and go into your MetaMask. You're gonna go into send you're literally going to put the address there. You're going to select the token that you want to send. And then you would just go ahead and put your, your available balance in there. You click next. And it's literally like you're sending money to the address. So, uh, but it doesn't have to be in MetaMask though. You could do it like from, it, it accepts all coins. So, right. You can do it from any, um, 
You cannot exchange. do it from an exchange. No, you cannot do it from an exchange. Oh, it does have to be on MetaMask then. Okay. It, it does have to. Well, it, it, it's in every, any, any. Trust any, wallet, any wallet address, or. Yeah, any wallet address that, uh, that you own, that you hold the keys for. Because, gotcha. because like, imagine if you're doing a straight send, where are they going to send what uh, the, the address uh, or the tokens to? when it's a big exchange that receives everything, unless there's a memo, then you could be doing it, but I just don't recommend for you to do that due to the fact that there's so many complications in sending it from an exchange. So I recommend that if you have anything on the Binance Smart Chain and you have it on Binance uh, Exchange, Binance.com or Binance.us, then for you to then add the network into your MetaMask and then send the tokens into your MetaMask to then do the sacrifice and directly send it from a wallet address that you completely own the keys to. So once you've already done that, which for example, out of these wallet address that I showed you guys, I went ahead and, and participating on a, in a small portion of my sacrifice. Um, where do I check now up until this point that they've done the allocation of, 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 of tokens, where do I go into like checking all that? So there is app X wind charts. Is this place where you're checking going to be associated somehow to you? To me? No. This is um, this is basically the back end. This is the back end of Hex as far as all the all the statistics of, of the Hex network. So since blockchain is is open and transparent, this website basically grabs all the transactions and uh, all the information that we have from Hex and, and basically puts it in graph form for you to be able to educate yourself on liquidity, on T-share pricing, on payouts per shares, on stakes, you know, ending all the way until year 2037. Yeah, basically you see all the backend just because it's public information. So the allocation of Pulse tokens is also public information. If you guys copy my wallet address, you guys see how much I sacrifice on that specific wallet address and how much Pulse tokens I've been allocated to. So if I now then, after having done the sacrifice for Pulse Chain, then you guys can see here that um, I say click search. There is a PLS allocation to this address of 97,185 tokens that I've sacrificed out of this wallet address. But the key here is that, and if this is trading already, if people are buying Pulse tokens at 23 cents, you guys make do the math on that. So, um, what, what I'm trying to tell you guys is that the allocation will be done after. So once you've done your sacrifice, it will, it'll show just as a regular transaction from your MetaMask to the sacrificing address. The sacrificing address is a very specific one. If you guys want to, um, to look it up, it, the, the address has been posted on, the, on Richard Hart's uh, Twitter account which is this official one ending in DDC8. So if you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and copy it for you guys to have a, you know, the, the, the right address. And you guys can verify before you send anything, make sure that you guys are, are verifying that this is the actual sacrificing address where basically all these tokens are being sent to. You know, you, you guys will see $25 million and all that kind of stuff as far as what's being sent to the sacrificing address. Am I sharing my screen? No, I'm not no. sharing my screen. Um, in this wall, in this, basically, you guys are making sure that you guys have all these uh, tokens in there. So I'm gonna put it in the chat so you guys can double check uh, that you guys are sending it to the right place. There is no website yet. So basically, what you guys, make sure that people are just fomoing <laughs> into this shit right now, which I don't recommend for people to do. As, as we had an official sacrifice phase for polls, we're, we're supposed to have also a, um, an official sacrifice uh, uh, website for PulseX for people to make it, to be able to connect their wallet and make sure that they're selecting the right ERC-20 token. You don't, you don't necessarily need to do that. You can just send it directly to that wallet address that I just sent you guys. And you guys will then be allocated a certain amount of PulseX tokens which will then launch at mainnet uh, with Pulse Chain, that which will be within a period of two months or so. Uh, you guys will know how much in Pulse X tokens you guys are gonna go ahead and get. 
at the moment that they uh, basically finalize the sacrifice phase, which is probably going to do, I mean, it's probably going to be like seven, nine days after the 10th of January, because technically the sacrifice phase was supposed to start on January 10th. Um, but they open it right now because there is certain people in the Hex community that was just um, uh, super um, uh, antsy about doing the sacrifice already because Hex has been pumping quite a lot for, you know, within the last two weeks. We went from 10 cents all the way to 35 cents today. So obviously the, the bags that people have and that have held from 10 cents basically just a couple of weeks ago have basically tripled and therefore they would like to send some sort of sacrifice as far as the value uh, that they have, right? So people are just purchasing a bunch of hex right now. And that's why we've seen the pump because of the sacrifice phase because they want to go ahead and take hex out of circulation to send it to this origin address because this origin address is never going to go ahead and sell, sell the, the, the hex. So as we send all these hex into the sacrificing address, we take it out of circulation, meaning that there's a less selling pressure, more opportunity for the pump. You know, So we're going to continue to see a pump within the next couple weeks, maybe. That's basically what we saw in the post-chain sacrifice phase. We went from five cents all the way to 15 to 18 cents or so. Um, in, in this case, we're seeing uh, a big pump uh, right now, but it's basically the same thing. You know, it's, it's, it's just basically due to the fact that there's a sacrifice phase and people want to account for a higher dollar value on the sacrifices that they're making, right? If you buy $10,000 in hex and then suddenly it pumps by tomorrow, you know, obviously your sacrifice is going to account for more due to the fact that he has a bigger USD value. So that's why the explanation of the hex pump that you guys are seeing right now and the way to sacrifice literally is super simple. From your MetaMask wallet, you send the desirable tokens that you're sacrificing into that um, wallet address. And to explain why it's happening so soon and why we don't have an official site is because people were trying to get rid of their losing positions uh, or sell their losing positions right now due to the fact that we're very close to the year end. So as you record losses, obviously those losses are going to go ahead and help out on the capital gain that we're having with all these other assets too. So therefore they wanted to launch sacrifice phase before the year end. And that's why we're seeing that there's $27 million in hex, just purely hex just being sacrificed so far. So um, any, any questions? You recommend buying hex and then sacrificing hex because you think the price is going to go up, so therefore it'll be worth more. And then when is the valuation? Is it going to be like right when it ends, and then it, then the airdrop is determined on the price at that time, or no? It, the, the 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 sacrifice value basically what you're sacrificing is based on your USD value at the moment of sacrifice. So if you wanted okay, to sacrifice USD. Then if you wanted to sacrifice $10,000 USD, literally your sacrifice is only $10,000. If you buy HEX right now, uh, you buy $10,000 in HEX and you basically wait for it to pump a little bit more. Obviously, this is speculative, uh, uh, but basically that's a behavior that we saw in the last sacrifice. But if you wanted to wait for a little pump, then your $10,000 investment would be worth now, let's say $11,000 or $12,000. And therefore, at the moment that you send that hex into the sacrifice address, then it records it at $12,000. But let's say that hex keeps pumping, will your sacrifice been, then be worth more? No, it's at the moment that you sacrifice, it records a USD value. Uh, and it also does the same thing as far as if it goes down, right? You send your hex right now at 35 cents. And let's say that within the next week, then we see lots of selling pressure and we see the price going down to 25 cents, then you got recorded at the 35 cent value instead of uh, at the 25 cent, right? So it's at the moment of sacrifice, the USD value that it, that it records. Mm -hmm. And there's a volume multiplier of 2.5x. Uh, so the, the reason that in that specific wallet, I got 95 million tokens was due to the fact that there was a volume multiplier that gave me that many tokens. Um, 
for the sacrifice, but obviously at the main at launch when it's available for sale, you're going to be able to only buy a certain amount with no multiplier, obviously. So, I, go ahead, Laura. Do you have another question? I just, I just, so we've totally missed the the first one, right? That's what you're saying, the the pulse, and then now all our opportunity is in just the pulse X, if we wanted to participate. Yeah, yeah, your opportunity. Okay. Your opportunity is only for Pulse X, which is a Uniswap of the Pulse Chain Network. I got it. So can I ask for clarification? I'm definitely coming from, anyway, I'm just gonna ask for clarification. So there, if there is a cutoff for this, right? You're saying January 10th? No, that, that's when it's supposedly uh, going to start. As in, in January uh, 9th or 10th, I believe, uh, basically you get a dollar for dollar on the 10,000 multiplier or points, they call it sacrificing points. You get 10,000 points per dollar that you sacrifice. So um, that's basically, and they, the more points that you get for the sacrifice, the bigger the multiplier is, uh, and it, it's based on volume. So if you sacrifice a million dollars, you're gonna more than likely get the 2.5 multiplier, meaning that you're gonna get 2.5 times the amount of pull chain tokens that you were supposed to get. And the, the smaller the amount that you sacrifice, then the less of a multiplier you get. It's a weighted volume type of multiplier. Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, at the beginning of the sacrifice phase, uh, which is January 9th or 10th, mm -hmm. then your dollar value for sacrifice points will go uh, lower and lower. So January 9th, you're going to get one for one uh, uh, as far as uh, the sacrifice points, 10,000 for $1. And then the next day, for example, on the 11th, then you're gonna go ahead and get only, let's say 9,000 points per $1, and then 6,000 points, and there's 7,000 points, and then 1,000 points, up until the point that there was a cutoff, which uh, for the post chain was about uh, nine days after the initial sacrifice phase. So I, I would assume that by the 19th or 20th of January, then the cutoff of sacrifice uh, would, would end just as it did for Pulse Chain. So people that are, con it's an open address, right? You can always send money to that address. And people that are still trying to participate on the sacrifice for Pulse Chain, they are being completely diluted. Meaning that if you send money to that address that I was, that I give you guys the example, you would get Pulse at 23 cents, which is complete BS. It's, it's, it's a 2000 X, dilute dilution uh from what we got it on the sacrifice phase so there's a lot of stupid people still sending uh, money for the pulse chain sacrifice and they're gonna get a minuscule portion of pulse when they could have just bought it at mainnet at a lot cheaper price so it's important to know the dates for sacrifice which is basically starting today um all the way until like January 20th. So there's plenty of time for you guys to do your research on the project, PulseX, for you guys to look at, usually you get educated on the live streams that Richard uh, does. He's, he's very knowledgeable when it comes to all these uh, different things, but, but you, you have a lot of time to educate yourself and see whether you want to participate on, on the PulseX sacrifice phase or not. How do you determine the price difference between the current uh, sacrifice price for Pulse Chain and then the mainnet price. Like, how do you know where that's going to come in, or do you, do you not really know? Well, we don't. Market is going to discover that. The one, once mainnet launches, then basically it's going to be up for sale. And I don't know who's going to be selling because one of the major things that we're receiving with this airdrop is that the airdrop will be worth zero. So it's, it's built into the uh, algorithm that all these Pulse tokens that I just showed you from my wallet are gonna be, the, it is programmed into the software that Pulse tokens are worth zero for the first three days of launch. So no one is gonna be selling you know, their tokens at all at zero dollars, you know, that doesn't make any, any freaking sense. But the reason that we did that uh, or that Richard is doing that is because <laughs> for taxation purposes, you get an airdrop uh, you have to pay taxes on, on as if it was income at the fair market value of the tokens. So if you get Bitcoin right now as an airdrop, you're going to go ahead and pay taxes on the amount of, of, of that. Even though you're not selling the token, you're paying taxes as if it was income. So the fact that we're getting 
the pulse chain tokens at zero value uh, alleviates a lot of pressure from us because then we have a zero value on our tokens for the airdrop and we only pay taxes when we sell the token. So as far as you know, distinguishing the value of pulse chain at launch, we know for a fact that it will be zero dollars. And then from there, we make multiples basically because then the price point starts from zero all the way to you know whatever uh, price point we want as far as the market trying to buy the the the, the token in itself. You know, so so that's that's my answer to that. We don't know what the value will be for mainnet. Okay, thanks. That's Carlos, that's awesome. I got a quick question. Um, do you recommend selling some of your tokens <laughs> and buying that hex versus sacrificing tokens that? Um, that are on the list? Yeah, I mean, it, that's gonna be really up to you. Uh, I would say that because there's many strategies for people. So like people keep talking about the, the sacrificing strategy for them. What, one of the main things that I uh, have told as a, cause I'm a, I'm a tech strategist too, as far as my background, I have a, I run an accounting firm. So well, one of the main things is that I would, I would sell all your losing positions right now if you no longer desire to hold them and then sacrifice the USD value of that in, into that so you can record the losses and also be able to sacrifice that USD. That's one portion as far as the strategy. The second strategy <laughs> is what I've been well, basically doing, what I've been doing with um, a lot of the uh, people here in the chat that have been getting into HEX is to DCA into HEX uh, so you can go ahead and take advantage of the pump for you to be able to sacrifice more of a USD value when it comes to HEX. And at the same time, if you're a HEX holder, sacrificing HEX is the best thing that you can do as far as, let's say the reason I bought 50K of HEX today was because, um, not because I wanna sacrifice my holdings, my long-term holdings of HEX, but because I wanna take more, more HEX out of circulation so there's less selling pressure for hex now 50k is probably not going to do shit you know we're talking about that the slippage starts um at, at you know two percent when you're purchasing two million dollars in hex as far as moving the price point by two percent you know so it's really not that much of a difference but when you're collectively doing it 50k at a time or a hundred thousand dollars at a time uh with you know a uh, thousand people you know, which is, is basically what you can find, then you definitely move the price. And that's what you see. If you check the price right now on Hex, you're going to be able to see massive pump today. You know, and, and there's a green ass bar this big, you know, for just a few hours since the sacrifice started. You know, so I would say that if, if you want to use that as a strategy, that's also a pretty good strategy that has worked out. Okay. Thank you. So are you holding your hex to do it? I mean, maybe I misunderstood something, but it sounded like over time it goes down. Like you want to get in on the sacrifice as soon as possible, right? Because don't you get more? And yeah, but but you have until January 10th to get that much. More. I know, but I don't want to like it my 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 sacrifice amount of points to dwindle, right? Don't I want to try to do it? Yeah, it'll start dwindling down after January 10th. Oh, after January 10th. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then what's this guy saying? Richard Hart. Sorry, I don't follow him. I'm not, I'm not in Hart. hex yet. H-A-R-T? Yeah, here, Richard Hart. Uh, I can't. Right I didn't see him. Richard Hart. Was. Oh, H-E-R. That's why I was spelling it like a normal like, person. I'm he's a kidding. bit of a character. He's, <laughs> he's quite a bit of a character. Um, <laughs> people either like him, love him, or really, really dislike him. Mm -hmm. um, but he's very smart. If you kind of move away from the reading of his characters and you actually pay attention to the knowledge, uh, you know, you'll, you'll truly be educated on crypto. Everything that I have shared with you guys from the beginning and the reason that I know so much about banking and all that is literally listening to his live streams and educating myself. So, um, what's his YouTube? Oh, live streams from Twitter. Uh, he no, lives on YouTube. From YouTube. Yeah, and he, has, he had he had two good live streams over Christmas, which are very um, good to watch. If you want, okay, I'll go back and watch them. If you want to understand there, anything about Hex or Pulse X or Pulse Chain, mm -hmm. um, basically he explains it all in there. And uh, very and, technical too yeah. about the LPs. Very, <laughs> did you very, buy? Very did good. you buy any, Claudia? Are you in Hex now too? Yes. You are. Yes. 
Yes. At first you were like, I don't know. We were both like, this sounds like a Ponzi scheme. You know, we were back and forth. You know, because because the thing to me was, I mean, I obviously listened to all this stuff from all these hacks. This, this, and what I really like about it is, first of all, it has this guy, Richard Hart there, which seems like the smartest person I've ever listened to in my life. I mean, this guy knows his shit and he knows everything about cryptocurrency because he's been there from the very beginning. He's been he was, there. He was a miner of Bitcoin. He, was too, minor, too yeah, he mined 50, whatever, 50,000 Bitcoin a day or so. He doesn't need oh any my gosh. Of, he doesn't need anybody's money. All he wants is because he's super rich. Let's say like this. He's, he's super rich. But what does it, what's it good for if you're super rich and the world around you is shit? Doesn't yeah. give you, and that really spoke to me because I live, I lived in Africa, I lived in Lagos, and it doesn't matter if I'm rich and I step outside the door and I have to step over some garbage heaps and over some starving kids. It doesn't one bit make my life good that I'm rich, okay? So this was the message that really sold me because I can I can kind of understand him where he's coming from. He can buy all the, the Louis Vuitton bags and whatever crazy outfits and live in his castle, but he has to come out, you know? He has to come out and walk on the street and go and meet normal people. And so he wants to build this community where everybody is well off and he built this huge hex community that are all rich now and they all want to make the world a better place and i think wow. it's a beautiful it's a beautiful concept i mean for for nothing else but help the next person next to you to also get indep wealthy independently wealthy and just find your little niche where you can help everybody can help in a different way right and so that to me is a powerful message. It's not somebody who needs my money. He doesn't need my money, but he builds different and he, he, he wants to build a ecosystem that, that basically serves everything from the fiat on, on ramp to my yield farming, to my whatever I want to do. And, and yeah. everything without keys, without admin keys, everything without having some sort of access from the developers into the code. So it's completely mutable code, uh, completely secure, 100% running time as far as it going down. And we don't have any issues with uh, the Matic bridges or any of these BS where they can just pull liquidity or, you know, invalidate transactions like USDC and USDT. So, you know, there's there's tons of different things that that when you get educated on on the sort of technology that he's building, you kind of move away from all the BS that people, you know, throw at you or that, you know, people try to make it and you really get to, um, to, to what really is important in crypto, which is being uh, the holder of your keys, never giving it away, even giving control, of, like if you wanted to stake it, never giving it to a, a certain platform that is it has now your crypto and it's their crypto now because they hold the keys to the to, to the wallet you know so all the technology here is all about no 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 admin keys and always holding your tokens you know and they're always in your power so we're getting into like all these other things you know with liquidity providing and now there's a whole network coming up and, and there's all these different issues that that are probably going to be coming up but but at the same time you know it's um with, with the type of community that is building uh, or, or that we support basically the, these projects is, is, is really something that uh, has me very turned on. And at the same time, it's been one of the biggest investments that I have in, in my bags. You know, the reason that I have what I have as far as crypto is because of Hex, you know? So, um, so really I'm, I'm completely biased when it comes to this due to the fact that I've made most of my money with, with Hex. Um, and, and therefore I'm so encouraging for people to do it too, because I've seen the difference that he has made on my mom. I have, I've seen the difference that he may, has made on all the people that work that I created retirement plans for and all the people that I have basically, um, you know, told them about Hex, they've all been, um, well taken care of, I guess. Um, and they're basically, so uh, sorry, uh, I was researching it today. And it said it had an $80 billion market cap. You think it could still go? 
Well, market cap has nothing to do with the pricing action. Market cap is literally circulating supply times price. It, it's, it's a bullshit number that people try to measure as far as how far a project can go. And it really doesn't have to do anything with it. You know, so circulating supply is literally the whatever circulating supply we have times price. So uh, I, could, I could put in a trillion supply on, on a crypto right now and I could literally sell it, hey Keith, do you want to buy this crypto for $1? And, and then I have a trillion dollar market cap. Literally, it's a multiplication of circulating supply times price, which is no indicator at all on how well a project can be, uh, well, it, it is doing or how high it can go. Hmm. You know, so it, market cap is not something that you want to measure a project by. Got it, got it. I don't know if Carlos I just had a couple of quick questions. So one, are they going to airdrop once they have IDO'd? like or as they ido or prior to they airdrop at, at the launch of mainnet so they basically just give you the allocation of all of, of tokens they tell you like you know like i showed you on on that website where it gives me the allocation of pulse tokens that i have on that specific wallet mm -hmm. um i only know the allocation but i haven't received my tokens yet until mainnet so once mainnet launches and i add the network into my metamask wallet then I will be able to see the tokens that uh, in, in my MetaMask wallet, but only at mainnet. Cool. Can you can you give us or is there like how do we uh, sacrifice to the Pulse X? How do we do it? I, yeah, I just showed you. Um, but that was the I'll, Pulse chain, right? Yeah, but the, here on, on the on the on here there is a sacrifice. Uh, address for Pulse X. Okay. Okay. Right here. Uh, and <clears throat> all you do is just go to your MetaMask. Right. Right. And then just click send and then send it through there. And I also put the sacrifice address into the chat. So you double check on the sacrifice ad sacrificing address. Okay. Uh, well, or, you, or you can just wait a day or two and somebody in that hacks community will make a how to sacrifice for Pulse X video it, it, and you just <laughs> <laughs> will every, every that's so true I'm sure there's one right now already <laughs> yeah, yeah there, there's already like the hexologist already um, <laughs> look at that <laughs> um, anyway there is a video already I'll put it I'll put the link right now uh, into please retweet. Uh, Thanks, guys. I gotta go. Thank you, guys. Next week. Thanks, David. See you later. Bye, David. Carlos. Oh I wait, David. Oh shoot! I wanted to tell him this drip is blowing up all over my DAO sites. Everyone's like, "What about drip? What about drip?" Anyway, whatever. Tell him next week, I guess. <laughs> I was gonna ask him to refer me, but um, he did. Last Carlos, time. Quick, quick question I, about. I I have his referral link. If, if yeah. you want it, I can send it to you. Did you, and you did it, Claudia, or no? No. Here is the thing. Why I love Hex. I am on Binance. I'm trying for the last two weeks to transfer BNBs to my to my um. MetaMask wallet and they just block it. They just what? like, oh, there is a problem. Sorry. Um, uh, talk to customer service. I'm like, okay. So I send them email after email after email. No, you, oh, on Binance, on regular Binance? Binance US, not Binance. Yeah. Oh, okay. You, you cannot do Binance anymore from the US, I guess. Um, no, I know. I was just going to say, you have to chat with them live. Because I had That's 50 fine. grand stuck in rate and find it. They found out I was from the United States. Long story, I lost my phone. Anyway, I had to like. No, it's it's the anyway, most, but you have to crappy, chat with them. It's the crappiest yeah. platform. I hate everything Binance US. Anyway, so I wanted to start the trip thing about two weeks ago and I can't because the BNB <sighs> that I had that I bought is sitting in Binance and I can't get it out. I don't know how to do it. But I have all the information and I can send it to you. He gave it to me. Like Why don't you before. trade it? Why don't you just sell it for dollars? Can you get it back to your bank account if you sell it for dollars? Yeah, and then where do, okay. And then I buy, buy and BNB somewhere else. Go buy just, Hex. You, you, Listen you to Carlos, just, wait you, 10 you, minutes, buy you, Hex. No, just, you, <laughs> sacrifice, you sacrifice it from, from the address, you know, um, just sacrifice it. 
I don't know if yeah. it's inside the exchange. You just don't. He do can't it get it exchange. to a MetaMask. I can't get it out of the Binance. US? Exchange. Yeah. Well, the, the, the thing, oh, you can't get it out. So not even to any address. You cannot even type down. That really sucks. Yeah, it um, just sits there. And yeah, I just, and 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 the customer service is not responding. I'm literally sending them an email. That's why we have to stay completely decentralized. It's yeah, just that's, a piece of shit. they're the worst. Yeah. Yeah, Binance at US, and yeah, they it's, suck. And I it's hate that. every account is like that. And Coinbase is like, oh, because this is a new address on the whitelist. Now you have to wait three days or something. Yeah. Shit like that. I mean, all this every exchange has some other. BS. When yeah. when it's time for me to give them my money, everything works like a hundred percent this way, right? <laughs> and then so when I true. want to get my money back, it's like oh wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. Wait. There's <laughs> they, they have they have frozen my funds for a ton of times on exchanges, mm -hmm. and that's why you know now all the trades that I do is just like completely decentralized. Uniswap. DeFi. <laughs> but but where where is your fiat on ramp on the decentralized? There's there's where yeah, there's where is, there's a couple Coinbase. No, well, no. Uh, there, For me, not, that's what I use. I, it's my only thing that works. But that's not decentralized. Well, matcha, matcha. You're, my on ramp. That's the only way I can get money on there. Carlos is telling you. Now, matcha.xyz has a new way for you to actually do a fee on on ramp into oh, really? like with credit card. Yeah, yeah. So just look it oh. up on there. So you just. And, then, and, and then the other way to off ramp, they put it on my credit card? Or how does that that's happen? expensive fees, though, Carlos, right? Yeah, that's why we. Yeah, we, don't. We, yeah, those, those expensive. Okay. But if you already have an exchange that really works for on fiat, you know, like I, I if, if that doesn't work, then I usually use Coinbase Pro. Uh, I have Coinbase Pro. I'm just saying, like, the BNB, I can't buy that. And for Drip, you need BNB. Oh, I don't know. I was like, it sucks. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to do hex. I did hex. I wanted to do Wonderland. I did Wonderland. I wanted to do drip and I can't do drip. So whatever. Two out of three work. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I'm going to do the sacrifice regardless. Yeah, me too. I'm a, I'm definitely going to do a sacrifice, especially because like I, you know, why worry about, you know, having some sort of like 15% gains, 20% gains, 50% gain, even 100% gains. Like right now, when when it has proven to when you participate in 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 in, in initial offerings such as this one, like with Hex or Pulse Chain, to to give you a nice, sizable return on your investment, right? You know, so really, if if Pancake Swap did us two hundred eggs within seven months, which was a fork of Uniswap. And any other fork that has come out from Uniswap has done more than 200x over a period of one year. Like, what else can you expect on a better, you know, Uniswap fork that has lower fees for the users and that is providing half of the liquidity for for the LPs? You know, so this is definitely like one project that I'm like, why are you not doing it? But obviously, I'm not gonna be so passionate with people of like smacking them in the head, you know, to, to do it. Uh, but I wish I could. Um, and doing that with basically my whole family and, and myself. Uh, but I'm basically just putting my, my mouth, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. So I'm, I'm literally sacrificing, you know, I'm, I'm thinking 50,000, but if, if my other investment um, works out and if Hex keeps pumping within the next couple of weeks, I'm probably going to do another 50. So do you think that will be enough? Like, what do you think the bottom threshold will be to get the 2.5x multiplier? Well, the 2.5 multiplier is by volume, weighted by volume. So you would have to, like, for example, there's there's already whales, you know, sacrificing just by today, like a couple million. You would have to be above them to receive the 2.5 multiplier. It so how'd you get it with just 100,000? Well, you don't get the full 2.5. You get a diluted multiplier based on weight. So if my sacrifice is 100,000, I will probably only get a 1.2 uh, multiplier instead of a 2.5 due to the fact that there is bigger whales that have sacrificed. Like just my friend, he's, he's just, just today he sacrificed $150,000 and that was just because his stake expired. I, oh yeah, I have one stake expiring $150,000 today. I'm just going to sacrifice that. Um, and I was like, well, how much are you planning to sacrifice? <laughs> Must like, be nice. Well, <laughs> Yeah, and, and um well he's planning to sacrifice a lot more 
Okay, so now I know you're big into Ohm and Wonderland and stuff like that too. And I know that pretty much, I think I uh, most of us here are in Wonderland too. So I, I, sold, I sold all that shit today. I was going to ask you, I'm like, I'm getting a little, um, um, uh, I'm worried about the inflationary aspect of it. I'm very worried about it. And I mean, I've taken some profits, but I'm, I'm starting to lose my enthusiasm for it. And yeah, I'm a little yeah. bit worried because yeah. I had to actually private chat with ca the calculator guy. I don't know if you guys know him, but he's like a genius and um, he makes these amazing calculators. And he told me, privately because I asked him like why you're so bearish on DAOs and I said all DAOs even time and you know the best DAO out there and he's like yeah he's like I've my trading signals has been on sell for a month now and their inflationary aspects are just going to kill him and now I feel bad because I've like literally helped out like everybody in here like buy it you know and like now I'm like oh shit you know is this a bad was that a bad move and maybe yeah. should we look into getting out of it and doing something like this or would you just keep a moon bag in it you said you sold all of it or or yeah why yeah, i sold all of it because i'm planning to sacrifice that in into well i'm planning to buy hex with all the things that i had with the DAOs. I, at the same time i made the decision too because i know that maybe the DAOs will come back up at a certain point like for example um it's kind of just floating around 350 dollars 400 dollars or so so at this point i had lost in just olympus DAO. i lost like twenty thousand dollars and you know, twenty thousand dollars in, in in hex. It was this morning. Um, I I purchased. I think um, just for the ohm. I had the. It was twenty twenty four thousand that I cashed out from ohm <laughs> today. And when when I did that, you know that that was that was a big loss that I was taking. But I was already pissed off. I don't want to wait for the DAOs to go back up or to even, let, let's say that it, they went to a thousand dollars, you know, like I would make a pretty nice double my money to like $70,000. But why would I wait to do that? My opportunity cost, the reason that I did that, and this is a, the real reason, the opportunity cost of the sacrifice for PulseX is many, many more multiples rather than waiting for the DAO to come back up. So mm -hmm. sacrificing the, the DAO money that I had in in time and ohm and any other investment did you get into jade or no you missed it huh somebody's got to go to the bathroom no i, I don't i you, didn't get into jade I, like, you're like I said, so you, lucky yeah, they rug pulled they yeah rug pull? jade rug pull yeah they're just scammers and yeah they're total liars and yeah it's i mean yeah wait is wonderland a scam is it out no wonderland is not a scam no, Jade. There was another protocol that I know Carlos had mentioned that he was going to get into. And I luckily started seeing the forest for the trees. And some people were saying that that they're a scam and they were behind another um, rug. And once I heard that they were behind another rug called SmartCoin, I pulled my money out and I actually made some money off of it, but That's it good. wasn't... Yeah. yeah, but um, I, I, pull, I pull all my money from the DAOs into the fact that- Would I, you suggest that I do that? I have a lot of money in Wonderland, like a lot. Well, I, I'm not I'm not going to suggest for you to do anything. I, I'm just going to tell you that I um, the opportunity cost for, for me, as far as my personal opinion, is that if, 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 uh, if, if the forks of Uniswap have proven to do a 200x within a seven-month period, then, uh, and, and Pulse Chain has so much- backing from the community and everywhere that you could actually see it you know you can only assume that it will do similar and even if you were to do and cut it in half at 100x that's still the opportunity cost of you doing that uh, instead of waiting for a 100 percent return on your DAO, it, it doesn't really it's worth it if i didn't really have pulse x at the moment for the sacrifice i would have left everything on the DAOs because i still like oh i still like olympus DAO and the fact that it produces so much interest but obviously the price action would have to really improve. And I was getting a little antsy, to be honest. Uh, but, but the only reason I pulled it was due to the fact of the opportunity cost and the opportunity that is presenting itself right now for Pulse X. So that's, that's my uh, own uh, decision, uh, educated decision based on also the allocated Pulse chain tokens that I have received. So in, in, in this case, you know, I, I wanted confirmation that Pulse Chain was actually real. 
due to the fact that this is a very weird way to actually participate on a initial offering of a token. Like you're literally sending money from your MetaMask to a different address. It's not like, you know, from all the other IDOs that I have done or the pulse chain, I mean, the, the pair chain auctions on Polkadot that have to do so much shit to actually participate on the pair chain auctions on the substrate. You know, literally this is sending your money from MetaMask to a, an origin address, which, you know, for me, I had my own skepticism. I'm like, am I just sending money to like someone that's just gonna go ahead and take the money and run? You know, and, and that's a valid concern. Uh, but at the same time, since I have already gotten my pull chain tokens, it has added validation into going even bigger for the pulse like sacrifice. So I'm trying to compare this in my brain to like the avalanche network. So the pulse is like the avalanche and the AVAX, right? And it's going to be the gas and everything for this, for this, this ecosystem. ecosystem. Thanks, Bob. And, and then, so, okay. What ha I invested a lot of money in Pangolin because they were supposed to be the number one exchange on avalanche. And unfortunately they didn't, they just like went basically belly at like i mean they became quickly became the number two the devs walked off the project and then trader joe like stepped up and like all of a sudden they're number one and um they're not doing anywhere near as good as obviously avalanche is do you see that there's a possibility with that same thing happening with this um with pulse like pulse is like the avalanche and then like pulse x could be the pangolin or the trader joe and then them not really doing or being as successful um, I, I don't see it that way. I mean, it is definitely a possibility because obviously, you know, I'm not a developer for the team or, and I cannot speak for that. However, from my perspective, you know, when, when Pulse Chain is, is launching, which is like the avalanche of all of that, the main thing in here is that it's giving us all these free tokens for us to actually be engaged in the platform. And Pulse X is going to be the number one place that there is going to be liquidity providing into it. So, uh, and, and half of the liquidity has already been provided to the liquidity provider. So I don't foresee, and it's completely decentralized, really, literally, there's no admin keys. So there is no team behind it to rug pull. There's no team behind it. It's completely immutable code. And there is really no changes or team behind it after the main end is completely launched. So it's literally the market going out there into the pulse chain environment and saying like this is what we pick who is going to be the winner or the leader according to the fees and all these different things right like literally cap capitalism so what what i see is that many other projects that are trying to develop under the pulse chain ecosystems they're the ones that are going to um some of them are going to be scams you know there's already a bunch of nft platforms trying to launch under pulse chain there is um, other DeFi type of platforms that are going to try to launch, but they're not rich or hearts. And the, the fact is that uh, the, the reason that Pulse Chain is, is, is going to be so popular on Pulse X is due to the fact that the community of Hex is getting a copy of the Hex tokens in the Pulse Chain network. Automatically, we're going to get double our investment into the Pulse Chain network. So the incentive for us to continue uh continue to be on the Pulse Chain Network and support the two projects, give me a lot of faith on, on Pulse X due to the fact that there's really no other Uniswap fork being formed into the Pulse Chain Network. And if, even there, if, if there is, I'm not saying that it's not gonna be used, but it's probably not gonna be used by the community of Hex, which is the biggest one. But won't the, if it doubles your money, then won't it, won't it be, isn't that inflation? Like that's what I really worry about with, with all this stuff, with hacks and stuff like this it's so inflationary well, hex, hex is an inflationary token for sure but it also burns the tokens when you stake them so at the moment when you stake your hex it gets burned and it gives you a t-shirt in exchange so you've taken out the hex out of circulation and the t-shirts are the ones that are producing the hex uh with the inflationary algorithm into it at 3.67 percent and at the moment of the t-shirt maturing then it mints the hex into existence and therefore you get your, your hex into your MetaMask wallet. So it's deflationary and inflationary at the same time because it burns it and then also inflates it because it mints new coins into existence. But PulseX and PulseChain are deflationary where they burn the transaction, uh, anything going into the transactions is gonna be burned. PulseX is also gonna be deflationary. So 
So there is no inflation built into those two platforms at all. Hex is the only one that has inflation, but it's only due to the fact that we need interest to be paid out for the stakers. And obviously the interest can only come from inflation. <sighs> Sounds good. <laughs> I'm gonna steal my time. I, I got a question. Right? So if you've got like Uniswap or SushiSwap, it'd probably be more advantageous to sell it right now and buy Hex, right? Yeah. And just to hold on to it and it get pulled into the ecosystem. Yeah, like I don't, I don't well, I mean your Uniswap token will be also copied into the pole chain network. If you're holding Uniswap on your on your MetaMask you will also get a copy of that Uniswap token on Pulse. But this is the thing, you would need liquidity to be provided under that token, under that project, under the Pulse network for it to have some sort of value. So what we're thinking is that obviously all these different tokens that we're gonna get airdropped into our wallets, they either have value or have zero value due to the fact that either there's gonna be volume being traded within the Pulse chain network for that specific token or not. And what we can guarantee though right now is that the HEX token will have volatility and will have price discovery under the Pulse network because Pulse chain is literally being created for the HEX scans, literally being created for HEX to be staked within the Pulse network as far as the PHEX. Yeah, HEX scans is basically how we the, the, the community is called. That's um, awesome. Um, I but, have HEX again. But, but, but your tokens are going to be- Wonderland. <laughs> your tokens are going to be copied into this pulse chain network for hex and the main people that are going to be trading within the pulse network are going to be people that are buying and selling hex and the reason that we want pulse to actually uh launch and for us is they literally the only reason that we want to do that is because we want to create stakes within the pulse network at, with a lower gas fees like just doing stake is like three hundred dollars and and all these different stakes that we have is just like, fuck, you know, we have to pay all these different fees. Yeah. And at the same time, it's an opportunity yeah. for us to get t-shirts at a way lower price and also buy Hex again under the Pulse Network at a lower price. Since it has already proven to have gone up 10,000 X, imagine going into Hex the first day knowing that it's going to go ahead and do a multiples and gains. Well, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. The reason that we want Pulse X to launch as soon as possible with the Pulse Chain Network, as far as the main it, is because we want to go in and, and buy as much Hex as possible under the Pulse Network, because it's a brand new platform and we're moving away from Ethereum to go into the Pulse Net. So, it, it, and at the same time, if you buy Hex right now, you're literally gonna get a copy of those Hex coins into the Pulse Network. So automatically you're gonna be at a profit. Yeah, but you have to pay the fees now. So why wouldn't you wait? No, no, you don't. You don't have to pay the fees right now. Like, well, I mean, obviously, if you Ethereum use, gas fees, you do. But it's thirty bucks, you know, like sixty bucks or ninety bucks at the most, you know. Okay, when, so, so when, you when, think that you should? Okay, so this is what you're saying. You should buy Hex now, spend thirty bucks in gas fees. It's not a big deal because you're gonna get twice as much on the other side, right? And then yeah. it all depends on how much you really want to put in. If you only have three hundred dollars, maybe not the best idea. Right, but if you're gonna put like five or ten grand into it, it's probably then it would make sense. Yeah, I mean, if you put five grand of hex right now, you're out of that five thousand. Well, I mean, the, the the hex tokens that you were able to purchase with that five thousand automatically will duplicate on the under the Pulse network. So whatever price discovery hex has under the Pulse network, which is basically we're calling it P hex or E hex, E hex, Ethereum hex, and P hex Pulse hex, basically. PHEX is going to have its own price and EHEX is going to have its own price. Which one is going to perform better? We don't know. But what we're speculating is that a lot of the volume that Ethereum has right now is going to move into Pulse. And what does that give you as far as a, an, initial, an initial idea? Well, if I am one of the few ones that got free HEX under the Pulse network, automatically that's going to be added value into the investment that I currently have, even if you then automatically sell your eHex. Um, or if you're able to purchase PHEX through PulseX, you know, on day one, you know that 
you know, all these massive wells are going to be buying PHEX on the first day. And we're actually thinking, like, one of the conversations that people have in the HEX community is, like, how soon do you think we're going to reach parity price as far as PHEX reaching the price point of EHEX? And how long will it take? You know, and, and a lot of people, according to the volume that is going to be traded and the liquidity that has already been provided, you know, it, we're thinking just a couple of weeks, you know? So if mm. you were to buy, even if your strategy was just to buy PHEX on day one, that would be a good strategy. But why yeah. not get free? Why, why one X, free? right? Right off the bat in a yeah, couple of days. Why not get free tokens by if you buy EHEX right now and then sacrifices for Paul's eggs and then do a hundred eggs on that. And I was like, it, it, it's it, it, your opportunity to cost to not participate on these projects is, is really great. And that's why I sold all my all my doubts now you're I, i'm i'm like you've convinced me like i'm gonna do it too even your bitcoin did you yeah. did you liquidate your i'm bitcoin not selling my bitcoin i'm gonna sell everything else though <laughs> no i'm gonna sell <laughs> I didn't a sell lot of it what i didn't sell any of my bitcoin either. what do you guys what is it what do you guys all think of ethereum is everybody like not into ethereum i mean i use it for gas fees <laughs> yeah. But what? Okay, so I mean, from what I understand, so many things are built on the network. NFTs have exploded off the network. That like just the network effect alone is like so massive. From what I understand, on Ethereum, like, why is it just because the gas fees are high and it's slow? And like, I guess what's the, what's the case for why like Ethereum is not a good investment anymore because I have most of my money in Ethereum. And so I'm like, and I'm, it's one of the things I understand the most because I have to kind of done the most research on it, but like, why is Ethereum not a great investment? I get the well, feeling from this. Like, look, you, you can see it from an investor point of view or from a technological admiring type of point of view. If, yes. you, if, you, if you're literally looking at it from an investor point of view, you are looking at ROI. Will Ethereum, uh, is it likely for it to do a 1X within the next couple of months? What is the answer? Probably not. You know, is it going to do a 3X? Is it going to do a 5X? So as far it's as- really you, not. <laughs> so as, as far as, it's probably going to keep going down, you know, and- that, that's the reality of it. So if you're looking at it from an investor point of view, when he looks into what is your ROI investment, it's not a good investment due to the fact that it, it, it's correlated to Bitcoin and Bitcoin is, is, is not showing us that it's going to go parabolic. And even if it does, what would be the potential gains on your Ethereum from this point forward? So $3,100, $3,500 to maybe $7,000, maybe an $8,000 Ethereum this bull run. Okay, cool. If that's a one X, congratulations. We, we just did that on Hex, you know, within one week, you know? So, uh, and, and, and when, when a couple of weeks ago, 10 cents and, and we have an all-time high of 50 cents, you know, so potentially you could even double your money right now. If you were to purchase Hex at this moment, you could double it and, and then just sell it. And, and, and that's a better investment than Hex. And at the same time, I mean, that, than Ethereum. And at the same time, you're getting a copy on Pulse you know, so that's that's even a better investment than than Ethereum in itself. And if you participate on on, on Pulse, for example, like your opportunity cost is, is just incredibly great. So from an investor point of view, fuck Ethereum. From mm -hmm. a technological point of view, dude, Ethereum is is daddy. You know, Ethereum has revolutionized the crypto industry, and 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 we have to pay our respects. But from the mathematical point of view, you know, fuck it. Gotcha. Okay. Carlos, so when <laughs> So maybe, so maybe like in the grand scheme, it's almost, it's almost like looking at it as like the Apple or the Microsoft, it's almost like a blue chip at this point. It'll might move slowly up exactly. over time. And is maybe as you're not going to like lose, you know, 80%. Oh, I mean, you might you remember that in, 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 a, in, in a bear market, Ethereum loses 95 to 97% of its, it's value. It's bad. It's really bad. Really, really bad. You know, so if you're willing to go through that, awesome, dude, you're a long-term investment, good for you, you know, for having that long-term vision, 
Uh, but but why do that when you can have other when you have other opportunities and then later on you can go ahead and buy more Ethereum if you wanted to. Um, Bitcoin. You should have Bitcoin all of this. Yeah. Do Bitcoin. It should all be in Bitcoin, in my opinion. Sorry. I, know, I got two questions. <laughs> kind of. A do we know yet when this Pulse Chain uh, mirror duplicate is going to be happening, or is it still like unannounced? It, it's probably going to be announced. It's not out yet. The date. We don't know. No, they're, they're basically what they call it. They call it a snapshot. I need to get some water. I've been talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's called a snapshot. When will the snapshot happen? As far as um, the, the, the copy of the ERC20 tokens, when it, boom, there's a snapshot, and then they're going to be then airdrop into the parachain, I mean, into the pulse chain network. The snapshot will happen soon before the mainnet launch. You, you don't have a specific date, but it will more than likely be announced by Richard Hart. So I recommend that you follow him on Twitter. That's okay. It. And then uh, second question, this, the hex that I have staked will also get um, mirrored, duplicated? Yes. All okay. your stakes will be doubled. Okay. Excellent. So Thanks. if you have $15,000 staked right now, that amount of hex for let's say for five years, you will also have a stake under the Pulse network at the same hex, uh, like with the same amount of hex tokens oh, uh, okay. under the Pulse network. So if cool. we reach parity price very quickly, um, you will then have two stakes expiring in five years for the same amount. That's awesome. Wait, so you do want to stake it or you don't want to stake it? Like if I bought hex right now, I'll get double or don't yeah. stake it? What what do you what do you recommend? Don't stake it. I guess I'm confused. If you want to sacrifice it, you can't stake it, right? <laughs> Different strategies depending on what you want to achieve. Yeah, well, I mean, why is one what what's the ad, um, advantage of not staking it? If it goes up like a ten x, I could sell it right away. Yeah, it's more liquid because it's locked a... in, and at the if it's staking, right? Stake. Yeah, you cannot take it out if it's staked. Yeah, you cannot. Stake, you lock it up. But you're 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 basically accumulating interest, you know. So per t-shirt that you were able to purchase, you're getting paid six hex per day per t-shirt. So, you know, it's it's up to you. You know, like uh, uh, up until this point, you know, I'm looking at my staker app, and I have uh, twenty five percent of it is uh, staked. You know, only you know, but but I have a big bag. Um, but that twenty five percent is enough to have stakes expiring every single year, all the way until 15 years. And then I have big stakes ending in 15 years. So um, uh, why do I not stake then the whole thing? What, well, because uh, a sacrifice phase of Pulse X, I'm sacrificing you know, some of these hex. And at the same time, I wanna maintain some liquid hex in, in my bags from now on, because as price is pumping so much, uh, like I said, I want to take profits. Well, I want to, I want to buy a Patek Philippe, like I said, you know, so <laughs> that that's really going to go ahead and cost me like 350,000. Um, and, and that watch is $350,000. Hey, Carlos, hey, oh well, my God. Carlos, Carlos, you have to tell us what you do every day, all day long. And cause I want to be able to do that too. You need to watch I suck. I, you know what you said earlier, you're like, well, you know, just sell your bags and the, you know, before the end of the year, blah, 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 because, you know, you can take the lessons. I'm thinking well, you have to have gains to offset them. I think I'm like the only <laughs> person that lost money this entire year. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I've, I've made a lot of money. I, I, this is a year I have made the most money I have ever made in my life. Like, you're not coming out of OM at a loss though, aren't you? Didn't you make 50 grand off of it? So what you're down yeah, yeah. Well, overall, only 30 well, now? No, yeah, but I took profits. I took like 50 or more, like in profits, like over, uh, you know, a few months. But mm -hmm. but my last, you know, you know how I was living 30,000, you know, every time? Yes. That 30,000 turned into 20,000. And that's, or or or, or 40,000, and then I lost 20,000. But overall, I lost like 20,000 from the last 30 that I had left in there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, so, I know. So Carlos, but, but like you need I said, one of those rotating things in the back then too, where you put your watches in, like 
Which one? <laughs> and then, and then every every Wednesday you're gonna show us your watches. Yeah, <laughs> like, you will be like, oh, let me tell you about hacks. <laughs> no, this Richard Hart. I mean, he's a he's a character. He's so funny. He bought like this duck Louis Vuitton bag, and then he has a Louis Vuitton stupid bear. Plush yes. bear. No, and the, the, the plush bear is humping the stupid I've, duck bag I've and always, whatever. I've <laughs> always wanted, like, this is basically one of the achievements, you know, like, it's a celebratory watch that I would like to get as, like, as a statement for the achievements of this year, right? Like, yeah, I, but... this year was so good to me that, you know, I want to make, I want to, I want to celebrate by commemorating with a watch you know and every time that i look at the watch i am proud of the year of the decisions that i've made etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah and, and plus it goes up in value it is not just like a wasteful thing you know that you know it doesn't go up in value as hex you know it's hex us but but it does go up in value and, and it's a good investment to kind of do it and i can just wear in my wrist you know so it's just <laughs> if you can't do it why not you know <laughs> yeah why it's like the guy who created you know via talk or whatever his name is the guy who created ethereum you know he, i saw him in a tub or whatever and he filled the whole thing with like you know the most expensive champagne <laughs> you know why not he, he like, doesn't drink it though he only eats salads lettuce leaves have you ever seen what he eats Vitalic. No, it's just vitalic yeah he just eats like lettuce leaves and stuff every interview he goes to is like another lettuce leaf that he's munching on <laughs> can, you, can you clarify something for me that's in the back of my mind that i don't understand of this whole thing is if you're i get your when you're sacrificing this you're assuming you're letting it go under the the quote unquote you're not supposed to gain anything from it but how yeah, if you're, you're making a, it, a political statement yes if you're sending it to the same wallet if everybody's sending it to the same address how is it associated with you if you're going to make returns from it well, the I look. Let me let me show you the Ether scan and how it looks, so you can see how it's actually being tracked. So, in this is a sacrificing address. As you can see, you, you you see that there is a lot of people sending money into it. So, as far as um, when you're looking at the transfers, you see all the uh, or, original uh, addresses that I have sent it to this address. So you basically see the the the, the addresses sending the the this amount of money into these um, address over here. So oh, that's a lot. Everybody's sending. That's a bunch. Each yeah, one of the person sending, like somebody sent twenty four thousand, and someone sent five million. Yeah, yeah. There, there's oh, a lot of millionaires. There's a lot of ton of millionaires and billionaires that are that have sacrificed for the pulse chain. Like there was one guy that sacrificed eight billion dollars. Um, what? Yeah, so eight there, there billion was... dollars. Yeah, B with a B. Yes. Yeah, he is a boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the richest people in the world only have like two hundred billion. That seems ridiculous. Well, in in crypto, it doesn't mean that it's liquid. You know, it's like you don't necessarily need to have it in your in your bank account. There are some of these tokens that have like Shiba Inu, for example, that are you. Know, Let's say that it only has 200 million in liquidity, liquidity, but their their portfolios are worth eight billion. You know, so it doesn't necessarily mean that they're billionaires or that they could pull out eight billion dollars on their token, but but they have a certain amount of cash value uh, due to the fact that the price action. You know, so it doesn't necessarily mean that you know they they have billion dollars literally in USD in their bank. Um, it just depends on the token that they're sending. But, but yeah, there, there's tons of people in there that sacrifice like just like that, $16 million. And there is this guy that sacrificed like, you know, 8 million, 6 million, of, you know, whatever, like 20 million in total. And, you know, you're looking at all these numbers and you're like, um, crazy. I wish I had it's money. It's associated to with their, their wallet. So somehow it's going to go back. To yeah, yeah. So, so all these money that is going in there, <coughs> it's tracking basically the addresses, sending it. So you are able to actually download the CSV file, and 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 see the 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 addresses that have oh, sent wow. money into it. So there's there's um, false lead X Y Z. 
You can calculate uh, who's got it. And then it automatically just sends it at some point, like after the 20th or whatever of January, if if you got something from it. Yeah, yeah, automatically. So you can see here, like these are all the addresses that sent for the pulse chain sacrifice. Like you can see, like it wasn't six billion; it was twenty nine million. Basically, this is the actual fact. Okay, data. I'm like, yeah. what? <laughs> now, this is this is the factual data. So it's like twenty nine million dollars. The number one sacrificing address: um, nineteen million, nineteen million, fifteen million, ten million. And basically, from the address that you're sending it into, you could basically see who sent it, and you could see the transaction. Um, and on, on the <clears throat> so these are all the transactions that these wallet address sent and therefore will get credit in pulse chain tokens <clears throat> and if i were to type in my wallet address here you would be able to see my contribution from that wallet address which you will be able to to see here there you go on this wallet address i sacrificed ten thousand in usd and i sacrificed three thousand hex Right, so it was four hundred and forty dollars, and then ten thousand USD value at the moment of sacrifice from this specific wallet address. So you you see, like, well, by just clicking your wallet address, you would be able to see whether the sacrifice went through or not. Okay, good. I just wanted to know that so how it was associated somehow, because when you're sending it to the one address, I didn't understand. Yeah, well, it's it's blockchain, you know, so the transactions are public. Yeah, that's true. Okay. You don't get a receipt or anything. Get a deposit. <laughs> You just, well, I mean, the, the, technically, you do get a receipt in the Ether scan. There's a, a little receipt on that. Right. But, but I mean, this is, this is how all the DeFi goes, right? Everything is just linked to your wallet address. You don't have like an account anymore. You don't have passwords and all of this stuff anymore. You just, your wallet is, is, is your pass code, so to say, in, in all of these projects. Yeah. Like if you when you stake hex, it's the same thing. You connect your wallet, and then and that is your only way to ever access your stake hex. Yeah, yeah, that's true. All right, guys. Um, if you guys have any questions, just let me hit me up. Um, I've already shown you guys how to do that. If you guys have any questions about Pulsex, there's tons of videos coming out. Um, as far as the, the details from the user fees, the burning mechanism, the tokenomics and the pumponomics of, of, of the project coming out, if you guys want to know more, all, all I know is that it's, it's, it's a really good project and is better than Uniswap because of the, the lower fees and the burning mechanism. Where do you buy Hex? On, on Uniswap? Disney. Yeah, you can buy it on Uniswap. You can oh, buy but it. What's the cheapest place to buy it? Where? Matcha. I do it through matcha.xyz because it grabs a vol it grabs the liquidity from different exchanges like one inch or uniswap or sushi swap and all these different exchanges. So it basically searches the all the different pricing points and it gets you the best price. Matcha.xyz. How do you spell M-A-T-C-H-A? Yeah, dot XYZ. Can you just do it in MetaMask? You swap? Uh, no. I mean, you could no, no, you can't. Not enough for hex. Matcha but, .xyz. but on the hex side itself, there is a swap. Um, yeah, you can go to hex.com and swap it through there through Uniswap. Yeah, but it was yeah, it's hex.com. That's right. That's where you can do it. But you can't don't, don't do it through Uniswap because, like I said, you know your slippage is going to be pretty high. Like as far as the, the fees that you're going to pay for Uniswap, if you go through matcha.xyz, that'll be the best uh platform that you can buy through for you to get the lowest uh slippage what so do you have to do you have to like, change the slippage what is it or what's the slippage we don't have that problem carlos we're not changing three million to have like <laughs> <laughs> slippage is a big deal it's like 15 yeah, percent yeah but not for like the small amount that we deal with it's like for the big people <laughs> that's true like, the people who can afford three hundred and fifty thousand yeah, dollar watches like, you know yeah, that yeah, kind of thing those kind of people so, if, you, if you if you buy two thousand dollars of hex it's not going to give you a whole lot of slippage so if you've got like coinbase pro and that's where you got most of your your portfolio and you want to buy hex through matcha you have to do it through your metamask wallet it's a decentralized action okay. so so you have to get a metamask 
yeah. and send Ethereum to it. Once you have Ethereum in it, that'll serve you to you know, navigate the Ethereum network or any DeFi platform. And therefore, if you have USDC in your MetaMask or we, you want to purchase just Hex with that same Ethereum, let's say that you send $5,000 of it. Well, don't, don't buy all of it in, in, in Ethereum due to the fact that you're going to need some Ethereum for the gas fees. Yes, so yeah. so it's, it's a decentralized action that you have to do outside of a centralized exchange such as Coin, Coinbase. So everything here is going to be on the web. Okay. Um, yeah, and also, I would recommend for you to move your assets into your MetaMask from your exchange so you can get an airdrop of the same tokens when Pulse Chain launches. Because you're not going to get a copy of your, of your assets if they're within, a, in, within an exchange account. Okay. Okay. There's yeah. something I wanted to ask. I, 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 I couldn't find a, a lot of support on MetaMask for a lot of the tokens that I really have. I mean... All the Ethereum tokens, okay. Then the Avalanche, the 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 Binance Smart Chain. But what about Polkadot? Can you have that on the MetaMask? What no, it's about not. It's not an ERC twenty token. Yeah, but Avalanche is not an ERC twenty. I mean, there's like different ways of having things on the MetaMask that are not ERC twenty tokens. Right, mm -hmm. but but the only ones that are getting airdropped is ERC twenty. Yeah, yeah, okay. No, I mean for the sacrifice and for all of them. Well, yeah. you, you know, that's that for the sacrifice is going to be a different story. What you're asking is two different things. The, 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 the post chain sacrifice, where, where was the whole thing? Yeah, but for the sacrifice, I also have to have it in MetaMask first, and then I can sacrifice it. So everything has to be in MetaMask somehow. Yeah, um, definitely it does. For, for you to send it, you have to select the network like Binance and all that, and it'll give you the address where to send it to. Oh, uh, so there's different ones. I was just going to ask. So you can do it like if I wanted to send some AVAX or whatever. Yeah, you, you oh, it's can, there. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, Monero's on there. Oh my gosh, I'm sending all my <clears throat> BSC. Yeah, if, if you have BSC, you know, Binance Smart Chain. I have, I have it all, Carlos. I have like $10 this. worth of every coin. <laughs> Carlos, the address that you put in the chat was for Hex, right? No, the, the address that I sent you guys is the sacrifice. Ethereum address for Ethereum the sacrifice, sacrifice on for Pulse X? This is where you're gonna send your money. You can you can go into waiting for the address to be on the official website. PulseX.com is the official website for Pulse X, and not any other chain. Like there's there's already scamming websites out there. There's one that says PulseX. Dot, um, <laughs> of course, well, I'm not even gonna mention them. There's not a, there, there's tons of them. The only ones that are legit is pulsex.com and pulsex.info. Those are the only legitimate pulsex websites that you guys will be able to see the sacrificing address once they launch the um, the thing. They like I said, the, the reason they was just launched today was just because of the urgency that other people had to sacrifice or to record losses on their other positions to be able to sacrifice today. But it wasn't due to anything else. They're going to launch the actual official website. Um, you know, don't FOMO into it. Really think about whether you want to participate on this or not. Think about the tokenomics. Think about the pumponomics. Think about the project in itself, the Uniswap fork, and, 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 and literally look for information that supports your investment decisions uh, and, and, and consider your opportunity costs as far as the opportunity that, you know, has been presented in front of you. So. So I would say just, you know, make your own decision based on, on, on the knowledge that you're able to acquire. Awesome. Thank you, Carlos. This has been amazing. Okay. Yeah. Thank again. you so much, Carlos. Oh, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you, Carlos. Do they make a this women's $350,000 watch just in case? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah they do. They have, a, <laughs> they have a pretty cool one on, on the tech. I'm just trying to get up to the Rolex submariner. <laughs> that's, only, that's only 10k bro that's only 10K. sell your ethereum and put it into this <laughs> seriously no i'm gonna no, let, look if, if you sell your ethereum right now put it into hex and wait for the pulse chain launch to duplicate your coins you sell your hex then once it has been duplicated and i can assure buy you you'll be is. able to buy your your subliner. that's a pretty big statement that's yeah 
Like it doesn't. Wow, like, Carlos! Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Hex yeah. is up to thirty-four cents now. Wow, it's crazy. It just shot up today so much. Do you think it's going to keep going up? Or should we buy like right now, or should we go wait? No, I, I would say wait because there's okay. always this FOMO. Like last time that I saw it on on Pulse for the Pulse sacrifice, we were at eight cents, and and then suddenly it was then it pumped all the way to fifteen. And I bought another bag of at 15 cents. Obviously, at this point, you're like, what's 15 cents on 35 cents? You know, it doesn't. But, but when you're planning to sacrifice, you know, it's a way, it, like what happened was that it went from 8 cents to 15 cents. And then it was playing with 16 cents or something like that. And then it dipped all the way to 12 cents. And, and then it went to 8 cents again. But like it got in up in like, uh, you know, within two minutes from eight cents, it pumped all the way again to like 14 cents. What my guess is, is that it's not probably going to pump too much more. It's probably going to maintain itself within the 30 to 35 cent uh, ratio, like or, or range right now, because today's pump was already quite significant. Um, I wouldn't. And then what, what, maybe like what you're saying is true. Like maybe wait till January one or later, because then all the people who wanted to sort of like buy with all of their losses and things like that, then that would be, um, you know, that would be over. So yeah, there, there's a lot of selling pressure today too. If, if like the, there's about 70 million in buying pressure and there is about 50 million in selling pressure too. You know, it's like, like, like today, you know, it's like I made so much money that instead of sacrificing, I'll just go ahead and, for example, like, I'm not going to do that. But I, in my mindset of taking profits, I would be like, well, I'll just sell $50,000 today. I'll wait for it to do a little bit of a correction to like maybe 32 cents, 30 cents. I'll rebuy my hex, you know, so, you know, you're, you're going to be seeing trading activity, you know, like people trying to trade hex. Um, and I would say, uh, take your time, set limit orders on matcha.xyz if you can uh, at a pricing point that you wish, you know, for hex and, and, and put it at 30 cents, you know, that it's going to be probably a better deal than 35 cents. But at the same time, if you're looking at the bigger picture, never forget either that that, that same amount of hex is going to get duplicated on the pulse chain. So don't be demotivated. I'm sorry, unmotivated by, let's say that you don't, that it doesn't continue to pump, you know, like people fumbling into it, expecting a 50, a 50 cent pump or a 60 cent dump. I mean, a 60 cent pump, because that's what I expected when I bought in at 15 cents before the sacrifice. I asked uh, my, my whale friend, he told me it's probably going to pump all the way to 28 cents before the sacrifice phase, because we're pumping our bags for the sacrifice, but that's not what happened. And I had that big expectation and I bought even way more hex. Now, obviously that has paid out like really, really well. Uh, <laughs> but but, it, but it's been a long-term uh, investment, right? From the sacrifice phase from two months ago. And I had to survive, well, like not survive, but like that whole freaking 80% correction that we just saw, you know, from like three months ago, four months ago, you know, I, like I was looking at my bags and I'm like, well, I'm still, I'm still in the green, you know, well, yeah, I bought in at one cent. Obviously I'm not going to complain when the, the investment oh, doesn't Jesus. go under 15 cents. <laughs> Obviously I'm still 15 X on my investment, but it's, it's not 50 X, you know, the way where I saw my number of my investment go to 50 times the investment. I'm just like, fuck, you know, it's like, I'm super rich, you know, and then, <laughs> you know, seeing that 80% dip on, on your investment is, is really harsh. So what I'm trying to say is the, the following, you know, don't, if, if you're, don't fall for the FOMO of an expected uh, pump at this moment, because you're more than likely going to be disappointed by the pump not being significant as you thought it would be, uh, because that's what happened to me. Now, it doesn't mean that that's the same thing that is going to happen, but let's be realistic. It's probably not going to double its price within just a couple of days, you know? It's, it's, it's probably going to take a lot more time uh, to do that. And you're probably going to see a nice little volatility going on right now for the sacrifice phase. Uh, 
but it might have maybe a 20% increase or it might just maintain itself or you, you might actually see a little bit of a correction before a bigger pump. The pump of 50 cents came after the sacrifice phase of pulse. So after the sacrifice phase was over at 15 cents, 16 cents, suddenly I'm like, oh, fuck, you know, okay, whatever. It's not probably going to pump. And then suddenly just within two weeks, it pumped all the way to 50 cents. You know, so I was like, why now? Why, why not before the sacrifice? Uh, so if, if history is an indicator of anything, I would say that the price of HEX is really going to pump hard after the sacrifice phase of Pulse X. I don't know why, but that's what happened last time. Cool. History repeats itself. Or it rhymes. Up today. All right, cool. Well, I'm in the chat, guys. Let me know if you guys All have right. any questions. So much, Carlos. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Carlos. Send us some pictures from the North Pole. Yes, yes. Send us pictures. Have the best time. Go? Don't freeze. Don't do that dive by yourself. You're going with other people, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there's a whole team of like professionals. Well, they're not like co professionals or doctors, but they're helicopter professionals that can save me or call someone. What you're going <laughs> you're going again to the North Pole? No, I was in the Mexican jungle uh first and now I'm going to the North Pole. Oh, I thought you went already. Okay. No, no, not yet, not yet. Take Mexican your garment. Take awesome. your garment with you. Say take that again. Your, oh. Take your garment exactly. with you. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Happy New Year. Bye. Thanks for coming tonight, everyone. Bye, guys. Cheers.